everyone. As usual, our biweekly reviews of uh, two weeks work work and the progress and stuff already done by the uh, platform engineering team. As usual, some reminders for me what what and where to look at. So, and the, just reminder of structure of this call. So we speaking about just general reminder of dates and stuff we already finished and you should probably expect in upcoming release or next month at least when it's merged. And also take a look at the work in progress for the teams right now to get some feedback on that uh, and also some future future stuff from uh, from the where are we going so today we are planning to do the end of development for 223 release so in one week uh, everyone should expect email and notification with release notes and binaries for this internal release we also start in publishing them on the community uh, website so there will be chances not, not only our internal preconians to look at it but also someone from community and the public release is planned at the second part of october um, that's that's our plans for, for dates any questions maybe for that if no let's quickly jump to their most like interesting or critical bug fixes in uh, like we'll have i think all of them already in, in 223 and let's let vadim to speak about the first one so actually there is no more to show but Okay, so as our uh, QA department find out if uh, user uh, make a copy of our dashboard and during this process uh, activated copy tax uh, parameter, then during the update, uh, this copy of our dashboard would be placed into the our folders. For example, if it was MySQL, that would be placed here. But initially, copy could be placed in was in the general. So in order to prevent such situation, we are modified update script. And now all, all dashboards that not related to our installation would be kept on the original place. That's it. Thanks. So if, if someone got there, you know, users or customers who were complaining that dashboards are missing after upgrade it's maybe because of this bug and they've just placed in uh, an unexpected folder and also two uh, i think yeah two mongodb related bug fixes uh, so carlos tell more about them do you have carlos in the call yeah, just join. Yeah. Sorry. Just in case, Carlos, you muted. But just join. Uh, I I don't know what. Uh, where are we? Should I talk about my tickets? Yeah, just just a highlight on this. I think the the most critical is the MongoDB 6 year problem. So what it what it was about and who were um, When there is no connection or there's a server um, error, uh, we were trying to get the um, database names uh, and it might return a nil, a nil value, but and we, we wasn't checking that. So we tried to loop over the null value and that was um, making the exporter to panic. So now we handle, we are still logging the errors uh, to let the user know that it was not possible to get the connection or run the command, but the exporter uh, keeps working and it will try to reconnect next time. 
Thanks. Any questions on the list of bugs? Remember, that's that's the critical one, at least what we had in our GRS, like important one. There will be more bug fixes in the release. Roma, was that? Sorry. No. Was that bug for Dell? Was it the MongoDB exporter? Um, the null value one that Carlos was just speaking of? Just a quick check it. Um, yeah, that's for also reported by some customers. I can see who it was, but considering the amount of tickets we get from them, yeah, it's probably well related to their um, to Dell. I can check. I saw it. you had I a page up. Could you maybe just put the link in the chat, yep. and then I, I could look at the ticket too. Thank you. Okay, then uh, with this, the list of uh, bugs, bugs, we jump to uh, the feature improvements we we have uh, during those two two weeks implemented. So uh, it's more like a, for information, not much we can change unless we just roll back feature or do some significant improvements. Uh, but again, just to know about them, and we will start with um, kind of one of our myths that we have. The cool feature for text file collectors, we even have some blog posts, but there was no documentation uh, about this feature in PMM at all. So uh, we will show some improvements in documentation, but I think before that, I've also just highlight one more ticket that uh, was also worked on. Uh, so it's uh, all related to PostgreSQL, um, data collection and when we created our own PostgreSQL, we forgot about some important metrics the community version of PostgreSQL exporter had. So we added those metrics back with some comments on them. So there will be not everything the MongoDB uh, PostgreSQL exporter uh, community version exposing uh, because of possible huge cardinality and because we have with analytics, which can help with those uh, problems much better. Ready? So you have already mentioned regarding this doc that was prepared in order to, with description how to use uh, text file collector in PMM2. We had this similar feature in PMM1, but uh, some flags are changed. And so it's a fresh version with some example uh, regarding uh, PostgreSQL. Here is, um, I have collected uh, metrics that are added from the custom query file. This custom query file was taken from the community uh, repo of PostgreSQL exporter. So it's uh, just a bit. So it's like uh, database size. Here is yes, in my example, it's collecting service names and size of database uh, replication log. It's zero here. Uh, start of the service. It's actually a duplicate. Uh, we are using our own custom query. So it's duplicate. We already had such information earlier. Uh, also, information from user table, statistic of uh, tables. Oh, but you can also make it into that. Yes, some examples. That's all. And with the documentation for the text file collector in trying to find the it's also published on the website, right? It's already there. Uh, I'm not sure. I have tried before the call to find out where is it, but could not in during the five minutes could not find okay. it. And mm -hmm. I have no one to ask. So I'm sure it was, but I cannot find this the correct link. Okay, yeah. Find it and add, add link to, to meet your notes for for this call. Okay, thank you. Um, next, 
one is bit. Okay, so in, um, yeah, I see, Jan, you have their item for registered monitor investigation. Yes, hello. Uh, so there were three uh, bugs found by our QA uh, regarding this uh, new new uh, version of registered monitor. Um, the first one is actually not related only to this version. Uh, so. IEG will be uh, reporting this to uh, to the team who is responsible for PG set monitor. Um, the other two, uh, first one is uh, about syntax error at the end of the um, input error, uh, which started appearing uh, as soon as we added the PostgreSQL into PMM. Um, it was caused by PG set monitor truncating uh, the query. Um, we solve should be solved by uh, setting uh, it's truncated uh, the, the flag that it's truncated and um, by checking if the query was successful if it was successful but we failed to um, create a fingerprint out of it it's clear it's it it, it, it was uh, truncated right so this this uh, will be merged soon uh, most likely today and the other one, um, uh, there is a feature uh, in this version of PGSTAT monitor that adds a uh, suffix uh, to views in, in, in the column relations in, in PGSTAT monitor view. Uh, so it breaks things. Um, so we decided to solve it by trimming the suffix. Yeah, it's in review. In, in review. It's all for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And one new feature added into their the upcoming version, which origin originated from from the bug, from the kind of user pain, and we just during the solving it, it become just new feature, new flag for for PMM. Um, Agent, so you do. Uh, hi, let me share my screen. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, my task was about uh, add a new flag, uh, call it uh, path base into PMM agent. Uh, with with uh, this new flag, you don't need uh, root permissions for PMM client anymore, and it will be fully working. Uh, in PMM server, we don't have uh, hard-coded paths anymore. So with this flag, you can uh, point PMM client to another folder where you have access. Uh, also, it is easier to set up PMM agent because for all exporters and tool, you need to set only one flag. Uh, now let's take a look on our documentation where we have uh, two use cases for this. Uh, yeah, here in case two, uh, we want to change folder because we don't have root permissions there, or we just won't change default folder. Uh, in comment, we used padbase flag, as you can see here. And other flags, what we have here, it's for setup. It is for setup reasons. Um, OK. Uh, in output config, you can see that all exporters and all tools uh, got base value from what we defined in it in part base. Uh, and uh, second case, we mixed a new pet new part base flag with old one parts exporter base. I'm not sure if it's yeah yeah. It wasn't refreshed. Uh, yeah, here we have part base and parts exporter base, which is old flag. And as you can see in uh, in output config, behavior for part base was same, uh, but for parts for all exporters, 
were over overwritten by uh, paths exporters base flex. So as you can see, we have this value everywhere. Expect exporters because exporters got this value. And in summary, PathBase will set path for uh, all exporters and tools, but each one can be overwritten by specific flag, like uh, paths MongoDB exporter and so on. And that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions on that? Yeah, are we gonna be able to access it using PMM admin? I see the syntax just as PMM agent setup. Uh, yeah, because uh, you know PMM admin using config from PMM agent. So, uh, sorry, let me say it a different way. The, the the commands that we publish on how to do the first command for setting up an instance is PMM admin config and a variety of options. Um, are we going to have a way we can do PMM admin config dash dash base paths? Does that exist? Uh, do we have to use PMM agent binary? Uh, no, 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 it's not an option of uh, PMM admin right now. Mm. So we're, okay. I guess it's good we have the feature, but it, we're, we're asking our users to change the way that they do things here by having to call a different binary that they've probably been naive or ignorant about before. Um, I would say, yeah, Mike, I agree to your point. So we also need this for PMM admin as we teach user to use PMM admin to, to do all this set up so it might be useful for the independent and kind of headless uh, mode for for PMM agent, but the PMM admins still, still need them to, to be more useful. Hmm? Yeah, but for sure we can edit uh, to PMM admin too. Yeah, it's more passing the parameters because if someone tried to start their PMM uh, like on the client side without uh, like in a not standard pass, it was the pain to pass all exporters or all binaries. Uh, and, and I'm not sure how it will work if we add new binary. So, okay, thanks for, for the comments and feedback. And thanks you for presenting. And now we jump into the, to the portal part of, um, of our stuff done. And if I see Nicola will start showing us some progress. Yes, hello. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, sorry, I couldn't unmute. So <laughs> Uh, basically, this is what you what you see when you when you log into the platform uh, to the portal. Uh, so uh, there is no organization, and there are no organizations yet. So let's create one. Uh, so I, I can. Sorry, I, these are the, the the previous tests that I made. Let's call it save it. As you can see, this is uh, the new organization. Now let's let's go to members. And now the uh, the the other feature that we're working on is invite members and uh, a list of members. So you, normally you would see uh, here under the button a list of um, even an empty list of invites member. For now we just have the invite button. We're working on the list, uh, so you can invite a new member. Just you know use an email. Uh, pick the role for the for the member that you're inviting. So if they are an admin or uh, just a, a technical user without administration ad, administrative um, permissions. Uh, so let's pick one, and then you save, and you have. You should see down here, uh, but again, this is work in progress. You you will see a table with the the newly created newly invited user with the pending state, basically because you have to wait for the user to accept the invitation. And once the user accepted the invitation, uh, you will see basically um, that uh, yeah, everything the, the other data that are missing basically. 
And that's it from my side. Questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And also, we had some, um, I say, documentation related stuff for the portal because uh, we started this it uh, like as an engineering part, but now the the more we move to the launch in the portal and the more people will interact with it, there will be some like. We, we found some missing pieces of it. So Holman probably give us highlights on what's what's going on for their explaining the portal and other stuff. Um, Cooper Quinones. Yeah. Looks like we post Holman. Yeah. I'm back. Just click on the wrong button. And just a sec. Yeah, can you see my screen? Not yet. Black screen starting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Okay, super. Yeah, so so as Roma said, so the main idea is that as a, as a team, we want to put in some effort, not only on developing the application, but also on providing information on, on what's going on. And the best way uh, for us to do so is to make available release notes. So we know that Percona platform portal, contrary to the other products developed at Percona, is not a downloadable product and, and, and therefore we also don't have a release a schedule. Uh, so what we do is simply deployments to our to our development and uh, production environment. Uh, so what we agreed on for the time being is that we're gonna wrap up all the work we have done uh, by the end of each month from now on and put together uh, some good release notes on, on all the items that we managed to develop and deploy to those environments. So this is the first time we do that. So you will find on there, I, I, I think the link is shared in the Confluence page where, where you find all this screen review. Uh, so the, we created a space there for release notes. Uh, and we follow the format that the product team has put together for release notes, so it should be very familiar to you. Uh, so not just a list of the things that we are doing in terms of Jira titles, but also some kind of insights on why we are doing this. Uh, and together with that, at the bottom, you will find some related documentation. So whenever we develop, we will develop something, we will try to come up with some as we call it, an official documentation, because this is from us as an engineering team putting this together, and mainly for internal purposes. We are onboarding a technical writer very soon, so uh, that person is going to help us out to, to do a much better work when it comes to release notes and documentation. Um, but for the time being, this is what we have. So. What Nicola presented before and how to create an organization and how to view the or info is already documented here. So it's very simple. So it's some information on what an organization is in Percona platform and how to create one with some screenshots um, and then what's next. So all of this will be found, will, will be found here and um, and going forward, we'll, we'll continue doing so. So we just wanted to share that this time around. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you for doing that. Thanks. And I think we have one more item left for the, for the alerting and the work trying to place to make it clear 
what's going on with alerting him, how we expect people to use it. So, hi there. Hi there. Uh, yeah, regarding that, uh, so all we did was um, for the art management duration settings, uh, we just had this small wording so that users uh, prefer integrated alerting over uh, this when they can. Um, so yeah, you see this, uh, there's a link to integrated alerting. And so yeah, this way we, we, went, to make, we went to make it clear that that's the, the preferred way to use it. Can I make a suggestion? Of course. So on the left side, we call it alert manager integration. And now we're pointing people to integrated alerting. Mm -hmm. Can we maybe change that alert manager integration to like uh, external alert manager or something that starts to deconfuse the two? I think our, our longer term, well, I guess our medium term goal for alerting is to drop even the integrated and just call it alerting. So, um, you know, I think I don't think I don't think it's necessarily a foul to do it right now because we have external alert manager integration, we have Grafana's native alerts, and then we have the new alert manager, but our new alert manager integration. But I think over time we want alerting to mean Percona's PMM alerting, not Grafana, not external. So just something that we maybe iterate on in the next release or two. Hopefully that's not a dramatic change. <laughs> it should not. <laughs> that's exactly in plans yeah. for, for GA. So make like eliminate this name's confusion. So it will be Grafana alerting, alerting and uh, alert manager integration. Okay. And that's that's what we are planning to do before GA and the alerting. So we will start referencing al what we no know now as integrated alert, just alert. And yeah, just funnel will be and, and as I'm reading it, I see like integration with alert manager is only needed when you can't use integrated alerting. So again, the terminology is just becomes circular. So if we just say, you know, uh, you know, external alert manager, it, it yeah. just get it harmonious. That's, that's all. Yeah, maybe if we, if we, well, I, I don't want to get into the details, but like calling it Prometheus alert manager or something just for clarity and distinction would be one approach. Yeah, we, we used here like the like the name for the tool is just alert manager, so they not not positioning it as a like Prometheus only. So, but yeah, maybe maybe adding the external is will add more clarity and we keep it. Yeah, right. I mean, well, alert manager is a Prometheus project. Yeah, yeah, but like That's... everywhere where they reference it, they've just seen like alert manager. So, other suggestions? No, no. Yeah. Thanks, Fabio. So, with that, we done with our part of the stuff is done. So. Uh, everything else we will sh like show in the in next half of the call is what the team is work working right now or planning to work or just started working or thinking about working or just not thinking yet even but working um, or any other com combination of this. Uh, so that's not something is already done and that's where we will ask even more feedback suggestions because it's easier to implement them in a work in progress stage. And that's why we having those goals to just get feedback. So uh, the next item in, in my list as I see was their backup, backups and some logs for MongoDB, which is almost done. I do. Yeah, indeed. So uh, last time we showed this, uh, um, but we also had some changes based on feedback from some people. 
So uh, if you remember, we had some buttons here and some toggles, um, but now we made it uh, more automatic. So you get the logs as, you, as the backup progresses. And so uh, also we added this copy to report. Uh, and yeah, so we to, I can test it here uh, just to show it real quick. So it should stream right away without the need for the users to to toggle anything uh, as we had it before. Um, there's a, a delay in the beginning of some seconds, sorry for that. It always takes longer while we are demoing it. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. So yeah, and if you click, if you click it, uh, you can. You can see it's copying to the clipboard. Uh, so yeah, from the, the logs, uh, this is it. Thank you. Any suggestions here? Yeah, yes, I, I have one. Uh, Fabio, I would like to ask uh, to place a copy to clipboard button uh, a little uh, separate from the main window because now it looks like a top but not bottom oh i see yeah of course yeah thank you for that okay. and the next in our bucket is improvements in in, in alerting regarding the webhooks and I assume, Fabio, you can continue on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have had a, a webhooks as notification channel, channels uh, for integrated alerting. So before we have uh, email, page duty and Slack, now we also have webhooks. Uh, so with that, uh, well, this is pretty much the field you have on our web manager. So name or URL, then based on the authentication type, you either put username, password, or the token. And, and then you can also add your and also you can skip the, the verification for TLS and eventually the maximum number of alerts. If you type zero, um, you'll get all notifications. Uh, sorry, uh, all alerts. Uh, so yeah, this is yet another option to get. Uh, notification. Small note for me for, for the alert and from this. So that's the webhook was our kind of last in initial the GA scope of implementation. So for now we we don't plan to add more notification channels. So we expect the webhook hooks will help uh, people with some like exotic uh, tools uh, do some integration with, with our other tools. Just, just to clear expectations. Yep. Okay. Is anything for there for the the kind of part of it from Maxim or that's all. Uh, uh, Maxim is not here, so. Oh, okay. So you you doing all the work while the <laughs> backenders uh, no, are I'm, just coding some I'm, stuff. I'm demoing, not doing. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. No. Okay, and. Oh, so and the next part also on you, right? Yeah, so there's two points missing, which is uh, integrated alerting always on. Uh, so yeah, we have removed this toggle for integrated alerting and now uh, it should be on by default um, and users can't uh, change it. So the API is still there, but it's been deprecated, uh, which means you can't really turn it off. 
uh, and also you don't need the environment variable to to, to turn it on or off uh, we remove it and so uh, it's always on and besides that we also name we are taking care of the naming uh, as we have been mentioning mentioning and so we change this from integrated alerting to the to the actual components that we have so the alerts the rules templates and channels and we change this part to refund uh, alerting so if you click here you go to the to the alerting we don't want to use <laughs> and this is ours um, so yes yeah. so that's that's the second part of the clarification naming for alerting and that's what we will do together with GA in the alerting Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah, on the yeah. previous previous page, we we need to rename the it's from integrated alerting to alerting when when this is yeah right right it needs to be just alerting for sure yeah the refinery repository will will be working on sometime soon to rename all the references to integrated alerting into alerting Roma maybe you can you, you can elaborate a little bit more on on why the decision of making alerting available at all times and removing the, the option for the user to disable it, just to provide some more context. Yeah, the, the reason there are two, first of all is um, like, as we plan to GA feature, we, we have this like, so we have the toggles for uh, some features when they're in technical preview. And the, their idea is when the feature is GA, we remove the toggle if uh, like if the feature not really impacting the pro, uh, like user in, um, environment. And in that case, like until at least for now, until you created any alerts, there there is no impact on you. So if there are some bug we have, you will actually get them either you have it on, on or off so it does not really matter and for for ga feature we just want them to be always visible and also eliminate this uh, make it easier to eliminate this confusion between three different alerting functionalities in pmm and what people should use so it should be more natural like when when someone asking about the alerting in pmm we will send them to to what we have in pmm not not just grafana one because uh, grafana alerting are improving but they still not covering all all the needs and all the use cases we have so not so robust i think grafana cloud alerting is what they offer as a paid uh, feature for Grafana Cloud users is actually compatible to the um, our alerting, but it still requires user to use uh, the PromQL query. So kind of raw technical, understand raw technical details. You can just say, hey, notify me when the MongoDB is down. And those alert templates is part of our future offering as an intelligence from Percona. So we we now able to add much more of those alert rule templates and give people ability to add more alerts so be more robust in in what they notified about make sense yeah it does thanks Any other questions for, for Lord and stuff before we jump? Okay, uh, then the next part in our work in progress is the PG stat monitor progress. And I think you again on, on the stage. Uh, hi again. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, uh, this task has several subtasks. 
and it is about add more features what we have in PG Stack Monitor to our GAN. Uh, in first phase, uh, we added ability to filter rows in GAN by application name. Uh, it can be very useful when you want to see only queries from uh, some specific application. Uh, this phase uh, is done and it will be tested soon. In another phase, uh, you will be able to see, for example, top query text in details of row in CAN. And also there will be new tab where you can find uh, query plan text and query plan ID, which are another metrics provided by PG Stat Monitor. Uh, and for sure, here are some front end tasks to, to show it. And that's pretty much it. Any questions on, on that? Okay, thank you. Thanks. And also I see there's bunch of more technical stuff to highlight what's going on on the on the portal side and those to me list is palash yeah so uh, that that one ticket that is listed there uh, sas was was high that should not be there it was done a long time ago uh, so like it was about uh, http endpoints uh, exposing HTTP endpoints for our auth API that's done. It's just not deployed on prod. Uh, what's what's going on right now uh, on portal backend is uh, invite members, which Nicola just showed you, and list members. I can give a quick demo of that. So uh, right now list members of an organization is only implemented on the back end uh, there's no front end for it so i'll just show it using a curl request i already have the org service running and i have created an organization with uh, two members so uh, this returns a response like this uh, for each member it shows the email with which they registered their name uh, their role in the organization and uh, also their octa account status uh, so we have this account status because uh, there are uh, two ways of registering you. Uh, I'm sorry, inviting users. Uh, one is inviting uh, a user that already has a portal account. So for them, the status of their account will be active because they've already set passwords. And uh, the other is to invite users that don't already have an existing account. So for them, status will be like provisioned. And, and once we show it on the front end, uh, depending on their account status, that user will be highlighted or not highlighted. So like right now, uh, uh, the uh, we only have uh, the functionality to invite users that already have a Percona account. We will add the rest later. Mm -hmm. This is this is an area um, that's going to be super important for us. The when we think about like what's the opportunity in front of us here, it's going to be connecting people who are using our software to the organizations, um, making those organizations easy to grow, easy to invite new people, um, and then being able to connect that to things like ServiceNow for existing customers, Salesforce for people who aren't customers yet. Um, and so this is something where we should be thinking like how can we make it as easy as possible to help organizations grow and add new numbers. Um, so great to hear that we're going to be allowing people who don't have IDs yet to sign up. Um, another area that I'd love to see us think about is um, how could we make it easy to um, share things, requests, request that somebody be added to an org, even for somebody who's not an admin and the admin plays an approver role in the background. Um, or things like, you know, when you sign up for an ID, can you be presented with potential organizations that you can request to join. Um, like, how do we make that really easy to grow those organizations so that we can tie all those users together um, and then help understand what, what is the company they fit into? Good progress. And 
part of this work to, to connect and also also the next items uh probably maxine will show us also they're they're related to this stuff because we even have our architecture team helping the teams so max okay it's my turn actually nicola uh shown some functionality related to creating an organization but now i want to show uh how we utilize okta and uh how we use it okay uh first of all we need to obtain an uh, access token that is uh, OAuth token uh now i do it manually but uh our users will get it automatically when they send into portal and uh, now i'm going to show you how to, uh, organization creation is performed and linking to service now account uh, is done uh, under the hood so um, first of all uh, just to show that uh, service now oh, sorry. Direction. So is now we have uh, account, uh, and uh, there is no linking to a portal organization. Now we want to create this organization. Just give name uh, and uh, our access token. Yeah, our um, organization is created, and if you uh, check. Service now. The link is established. Now, uh, what can we do here? Uh, just uh, get information, create organization. Of course, we can delete it. Mm, just uh, set organization ID and delete. And uh, one more extra mile for uh, Holman, especially for Holman. Uh, we can obtain a list of tickets from service now. Uh, the, the rest of the functionality is in progress and uh, I hope I will share it with you next spring. Thank you, Max. Just, just to complement, uh, this is very much related to what you just mentioned, Donnie. So, uh, of course, as you can see, this is all what, what happens behind scenes and Max has been implementing the functionality and the corresponding services and from on the portal side, but also on how that connects to, to Okta, which is our identity manager. Uh, but on the front end side of things, this should not change the way a user creates an organization. So we're going to uh, provide a very simple user experience as Nicola already demo. And behind scenes, we will trigger all of these different processes to establish the connection for the user between the org being created in portal with an existing org account in service now. And then the user will simply get notified that that link has been established. And, and, and because of that link, the user will have access to certain services in Percona platform provided by ServiceNow. So from oh, that okay. list uh, of, yeah. I'm just curious, Max, from that list of tickets that you retrieved, are those tickets for that user or tickets for the whole organization? Uh, the tickets for whole account because uh, as I was told, uh, the users inside uh, ServiceNow have uh, the same permissions they can view uh, the same list of tickets. Okay, that's from that's from Jay. There's not so if you're an admin or technical account, you can see everything. Uh, yes, uh, the, the list of tickets is provided by service now, and uh, this service decides uh, what to present. Okay. And uh, by the way, I just uh, removed uh, organization from portal and. Uh, the just uh, fetch the uh, fresh information from service now the link is reset that's all 
I see on there the item for the organization, Nicola, you already presented, so. Yeah, uh, if you want, I can actually show you uh, to, to, to those darn new and maybe missed it before that how it will, uh, it, let me show the screen again, how it should uh, actually look uh, the list of users quickly. So um, this is, these are the, the, the designs for it. So it, they're not going to be exactly the same, but roughly. Uh, so as, as you can see, there's a, this is the invite button that I show that I showed you before. And, uh, here is a table with a list of users basically. And this one, the first one, uh, Bugs Bunny is the one that we already, uh, that already accepted and, uh, filled the, the, the form with his name basically. And then there's another one, uh, in pending state. So this is, uh, how we should look, and you can uh, delete a member or edit a member if you are an admin. If you're a normal user, uh, you cannot do that. Okay. Thanks. So, and let's say to continue on Mark's list of the tickets and how it will look like we can jump to some uh, even more work in progress. So the stuff Ali working on the prototypes and designs for for the future work, and especially for stuff is like interest. Everyone interested, and that's where we need a lot of feedback. Is the PMM uh, and the portal integration and information. So Ali, can you share? Oh, I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Give me a sec. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, just a quick walkthrough of uh, what uh, uh, portal would look like in, in PMM. So we have sections that are, you know, uh, are in portal, which is your contacts and your account information. And then um, under the overview section, we've decided to uh, infuse a bit of uh, the goodness of PMM with features of portal. So uh, right off the top, we have uh, your alerts and you have your alert title here. And if you press here, you'll see some details about particular alert, similar with uh, STT or security threat tool, where you would see the uh, threat here and, and uh, information. And then uh, the second part would be an environment overview, which is essentially shows you uh, what, what you have currently in, in your PMM, and it also provide a breakdown by different technologies if you, if you, are, if you have, have different uh, databases deployed. And then we also have some high level indicators here. Then uh, additionally to that, uh, you'd be able to view detailed uh, environment information. So if you click on the drop, drop down here, you'd be able to see your different environments, for example, development, staging, uh, production. Um, so you'd have a view there and it's uh, the, the that's associated to uh, those different environments. And then if you hover over here, uh, here you'd see you know, how many instances of uh, the particular uh, database you have. And then going down, you also have a list of your tickets in, uh, so from ServiceNow, and then uh, this section here, we've left it for query analytics and we're still working on the design. And then um, the sections that you have today in, P in PMM, which is your news feed and your panel for PMM upgrade. Any questions or comments? Do we, <clears throat> excuse me, do we envision this taking over the homepage 
for for uh, PMM. Yeah, like that, that's the default the, dashboard. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's the idea. Okay. For the alert part, if you can go up a bit. Sure. Um, so you're showing all the alerts and all that stuff. Um, would I, would the customer would be able to hide an alert? So saying we are showing the alert, but for the customer that's not relevant, and it, it could show uh, hide the alert for a day or for forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think uh, that's a suggestion. Of course, uh, you. Uh, I think you'd want to snooze and uh, yeah, snooze or hide. Things. Yeah. So, okay. so we do have that feature now, um, but you'd have to hide it from the sub page. So if you go to the security uh, advisor page, you can snooze uh, those things there so that they don't annoy you. But my assumption is we could probably add the same functionality right to here if it already exists elsewhere. Good suggestion though. Other than the fact that the only, you know, we only suggest important stuff, right? So if it's up there, it's important. Yeah. Can you scroll up a little bit farther, please? Um, up or down? Up, yeah, perfect. Um, do, yeah. do you have a, a kind of story somewhere, like what are what user flows are connected to this design that I could check out? Um, so, uh... For now, um, we were just simply transferring what's in portal uh, to PMM. Okay. Um, we haven't envisioned any particular user flows, but uh, what we were thinking is, you know, since uh, you know on, on the current homepage all the goodness of PMM is kind of hidden, we wanted to bring out all the main features onto dashboards so that you could access them uh, quickly. Okay. I have one more question. Um, so when uh, the part when you are showing right now, when you're showing how many uh, servers do you have in, in Postgres or database, wouldn't, would it be possible to just actually have the number in that box itself, not up on the box, but just without, without moving your uh, uh, mouse there, just, just seeing the number all the mm -hmm. time. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have to go one by two, one two, uh, checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just inside that, that box, you could have the number five or 10. Yeah, I, I like that idea. And then if you uh, hover over it, the tooltip would say, you know, 10 MySQL instances, 10 MongoDB instances. So maybe expand on it. But I agree. Yeah. That was the first thing I noticed too, is just yeah, or, having to or, count up the boxes until you yes. hovered over it. But why hover yeah. if you don't have to? Or, or if you move your uh, mouse there, showing all of them at the same time, not one by one or just having the number in those boxes, yeah. I think that's the right idea, the box, yeah. if, if it can yeah. be done. Yeah, the, the number showing that somehow would make sense. Um, one, one other thing I, I feel like is an opportunity here is um, using the color to indicate the health of each individual server um, or somehow otherwise indicating what is the health of my landscape right now. Mm -hmm. So like sh shades of green, shades of blue or I, I, I don't know. I'll defer to the designer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, but we're, we're showing the whole environment. And so it feels like we can show like, all right, what's different here, but also what is actionable here? Um, and what's actionable is I'm here because I want to understand are things good, are things not good, and then start working my way into the things that are not good. And being um, able to, exactly, yeah. I like that. That, that was exactly the like, point we discussed with Ali just, just before that call, like, because maybe it's not as interest in how many MySQL or Mongo you have in your environments, but more like, are they all uh, like good or there's something something on fire? And then like, is it MySQL or Mongo on fire? That's kind of the secondary. Mm. Yeah. Um, all those metrics on the uh, right side, uh, those are the average from all the nodes, all the databases like Mongo, Maria, Postgres. So that's the uh, DB query per second from every single node, that's the average or you're just choosing one? It's all, it's summary from all of them. And I think it's even calculated using the query analytics because there we have better, better numbers. Okay. Is that useful information to be? Uh, 
So I don't really think so at this point because it, MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL, I, I don't, at this point, I don't see the actual usefulness of this because if I invest in, maybe when you are, who, let's say you're hovering your mouse on MySQL, the number would change and would show the average on MySQL. Mm -hmm. Well, I, he did the, the expand the environments and it, it didn't make sense as a roll up like this. But when I see like production or staging or I think seeing that aggregate yeah. made a little bit yeah. more sense. Yeah, for me, it doesn't make sense to average on MySQL Mongo. But I would like to see uh, the MySQL and the Mongo average. Thank mm -hmm. you.